Good morning children. This is 8th standard match. Chapter name is Cubes and Cube Roots. So, let us solve exercise 1.2 problems. In the last video, we have studied how to find the cube root of the given number through prime factorization method. Now, this is the second main of the last exercise of this chapter 1.2. The second main is about say true or false. So certain statements are given related to cubes and cube roots. By reading the statement and by checking that statement, we have to say whether that particular statement is true or false. So consider the first question in which the given statement is cube of any odd number is even so that is for example let us consider 7 we know that 7 is an odd number so cube means 7 cube 7 into 7 into 7 we get the final answer equal to 343 has a perfect cube or cube number what is a given statement cube of any odd number is even Children, whether 343 is an even number? Yes, it is not an even number. 343 is an odd number. Therefore, the given statement is false. Cube of any odd number is always, is always even is given the statement that is false. The correct statement is cube of any odd number is always odd. So, I have given one example. 7 cube is equal to 7 into 7 into 7. It is 343 and it is not even. So, cube of any odd number is even. It is the false statement. And the correct statement is cube of any odd number. If you consider, it will always be the odd number. Therefore, the perfect cube or the cube number of the that is uh, will be odd number. The second question. A perfect cube does not end with the two zeros. Yes, this is a correct statement. That is true. So, we can consider the example 10 cube. Okay. So, 10 cube. So, that. So, that 10 into 10 into 10. 10 tens are 100. 100 into 10. It is 1000. So, what is the question? A perfect cube does not end with the two zeros. Yes, that is a true statement because the perfect cube here, if you consider 1000, ends with the three zeros, not with the two zeros. Therefore, the given statement is true. Therefore, a perfect cube does not end with the two zeros is the true statement. Next, consider the third question. If square of a number ends with 5, then its cube ends with 25. So, to check this statement, let us consider an example. 5 square. The given is, if a square of a number ends with 5. For example, let us consider the number which ends with 5, that is 5 square. So, 5 into 5, it will be 25. Therefore, the square of a number is ending with 5. That is correct. Then, its cube ends with 25. So, to the same number, let us take 5 cube. So, 5 cube, 5 into 5 into 5, we are getting 65. Therefore, the cube of the same number ends with 25. So, if you look into the last two digit, yes. It is ending with 25. Therefore, the given statement is true. That is, if a square of a number ends with 5, then its cube ends with 25. That is true. If a square of a number, for example, 5 square is 
25 and 5 cube is equal to 625 which ends with 25. So this particular statement is true. Next is the fourth statement. There is no perfect cube which ends with 8. We will check this statement is correct or wrong. Say children, for example, let us consider the number 12. So 12 cube. When you cube the number 12 into 12 into 12, which is equal to 1728. So this is a perfect cube or a cube number which ends with 8. Therefore, whether the given statement is true? No, it is false because there is a perfect cube that can end with 8 that is 12. So, when you make 12 cube, you will get the answer where the number will end with 8. So, the given statement is false. The correct statement will be there is a perfect cube that can end with 8. Therefore, this is false and this is the example to say that there is a perfect cube that ends with 8. Next is the fifth question. The cube of a two digit number may be a three digit number. So, let us check this. For example, let us consider the two digit number that is 10. So, the two digit number starts from 10. So, let us consider 10. So, when we cube that number 10 cube, 10 into 10 into 10, we will get the cube number has 1000. So, 1000 when you count 1, 2, 3, 4 which is a 4 digit number. Then can you say this is a correct? No, this particular statement is false. Because the cube of a two digit number, it's not a three digit number, it is a four digit number. Therefore, the given statement is false. That is, the cube of a two digit number may be a three digit number is the false statement. And the correct statement is, the cube of a two digit number is a four digit number, not a three digit number. Example, 10 cube is 1000 which is a four digit number therefore the given statement is false consider the sixth question now the cube of a two digit number may have seven or more digits so to have seven or more digits let us consider the last digit having the two last number which consists of two digits is that is 99 so when 99 is cubed that is 99 cube therefore 99 into 99 into 99 when you multiply you will get the final answer has 9,70,299 you will get has the perfect cube answer for the 99 number which is a 6 digit number if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 which is a 6 digit number. What is the given statement? The cube of a 2 digit number may have 7 or more digits. Now the 2 digit number is ending with a 6 digit number whether it is ending with 7 or more digits children no so 99 is the last two digit number and hence the given statement is false because 99 is a ending with a six digit number not with the seven or more digits therefore the given statement is false the correct statement is the cube of a two digit number may have six digit number not more than 6. It will not have 7 or more digits. For example, when you cube 99, you will get the 6 digit number that is 9,70,299 which is a 6 digit number. Therefore, the given statement is false. The cube of a 2 digit number may have 6 digit number not 7 or more digits. Therefore, this is false statement. Consider the seventh problem. Now, the cube of a single digit number may be a single digit. To certain digit, it is true. For example, if you consider a single digit uh, number that is 2, when we cube the number 2, 
2 into 2 into 2, 2 2 is a 4, 4 2 is a 8, which is a single digit number that is true. But this statement will not hold good for all the single digit number. For example, if you consider 3 cube, 3 into 3 into 3, 3 3 is a 9, 9 3 is a 27 which is not a single digit number it is a two digit number therefore this particular statement will hold good will be correct only for the single digit that is two as well as for one because when you make one cube so one into one into one that will be equal to one again it is a one digit number now if you consider 3 cube, 3 into 3 into 3, this is 3 is a 9, 9 3 is a 27, which is a 2 digit number. Correct. Therefore, children, this statement, the cube of a single digit number may be a single digit is there. No, this is true only for 2 and 1 digit. Therefore, children, the cube of a single digit number may be a single digit holds good true only for single digits 2 and 1 has a perfect cube is a single digit number where 2 cube is 8 which is a 1 digit number 1 cube 1 into 1 into 1 it is 1 which is a 1 digit number so only for 2 it holds good. But the cube of a single digit, for example, 3, when you cube, it is not ending with a single digit number where it is a two digit number. Only for 2 and 3, that particular statement is true. This is all about this lesson, children, cubes and cube roots. So, the important points that you need to remember in this chapter is the number obtained that is, when a number is multiplied by itself three times are known as cube numbers or perfect cube. For example, 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, 216, 343, 512, 729, 1000. These are all the examples for cube numbers or they are perfect cubes. And... If in the prime factorization of any number, if we consider, if the each factor appears three times, then the number is a perfect cube. And also, we have studied how to find the cube root through the prime factorization method. The symbol used is cube root symbol. Therefore, cube root of 27 will be equal to 3 and cube root of 8 will be equal to 2. So, these are the important points that we have studied in cubes and cube roots. Hope it is clear children. Thank you.